So my 10 ounce fabric has arrived and that's two ounces more weight than the eight ounce. I also got a wool roving I had ordered. And so I'm making another test pad. The bottom layer is going to be one ounce. Then I'm going to have one of those wool mat layers. And on top of that is going to be the wool roving with another wool mat layer on top of that. And then the 10 ounce will be the outside of it all. So I'm going to get that put together. I'm going to get it grommeted. So here are the results. Here's the old one for comparison. This is a little less floppy than the old one. And if you get a look at the edges, you can see a notable difference in thickness already. This feels substantially tougher. So I can't wait to test it as soon as I get good light in halfway decent weather. So I've come to believe that my testing of padded armor, my playing around with that, isn't as good as it could be. And that's primarily because some of the stuff that I'm testing with isn't well described and may not be easily obtainable by anyone who might want to repeat the test. I have described the materials I'm using, where I got them from, what they cost, as well as the tools much to the same extent. But for instance, I was using these bags that just came with some packaging of something that was shipped to me, instead of something that someone could make as an analog for the resistance of muscle underneath padding. So what I've gone ahead and done is I've made my own air bag, which if I put it next to my thigh, I move my hand around on my thigh, and I move my hand around on this, I get the same kind of resistance there. It flexes the same way, it feels the same way tactily. So I feel that's a fair analog as long as something doesn't pierce the bag because as soon as the air is let out, it of course loses all resistance. Now how I've made this is I've got in a standard Ziploc sandwich baggie and I've inflated it with air, inserted it into another bag. Both bags are, of course, sealed. And then I've laid down layers of shipping tape. And that's just to make sure that the air mostly stays in the bag, that it has something of a tough skin on it. But I figure that's something that most people who would want to test my results on the same terms that I did my testing will be able to fairly easily replicate. I was also putting this stuff to the test with things like a tollwar, which has a sharp edge, a very sharp point, and I feel like in practice this isn't going to see that kind of abuse. And since I'm mostly going for a practice armor, maybe I want something a little more like this. Now this is a decorational claymore. It has this very dull, flat, wide edge. So it's not unlike a training sword in that respect. And I figure anyone can probably find, at the very least, a flat-edged metal bar or strip 
of some kind to act as this. I am aware also that some people do not use safety tips any more than beyond not having a sharpened tip or having this rounded. So that's something to consider using. But when someone does use a safety tip, I feel like the side that I've been using is a pretty good analog for that, for thrusting and sort of little dashes with it against the fabric. Two other types of edges that this might encounter are wooden edges. So here is a wide piece of border board, and this is actually a boken. And again, with the boken, we have a dull, broad tip. And also a gambeson or something that my test materials may eventually turn into might see contact from a buckler, so I feel that's fair to include. Overall, I just want to make sure that anyone who does want to follow along or who wants to test my results can more easily do so, either by having the same materials more readily available to them or by having very close analogs to the things I'm using. I also don't think it's unreasonable to see how they might do against modern weapons that a person might be carrying, such as a pocket knife, a hunting blade or other fixed blade that has a drop point, and a fixed blade that may have unusual features like serrades, or a tonto tip. I occasionally use my gambeson as a winter coat when it's cold out. Even though it's a little odd for modern wear, nobody really even blinks twice at it. There's a lot of coats out there made modernly that have diamond quilted pattern on them. It's not unreasonable to expect that somebody who makes some of this as armor might also use it every day and so it's not unreasonable to test dangers that might try to get through that So the pad held up very well against pretty much all testing. There's surface damage, but the only things that really went all the way through was a stab from the big claymore and a stab from the hunting knife. The hunting knife stab was after the bag had been deflated by the claymore. And so it actually had less rebounding resistance against it. I suspect that this wouldn't make a bad piece of armor for training or for everyday protection. Of course, it isn't going to protect you from a bullet, most likely. But it is pretty substantial. I think I'm at the point where I have the materials that I'm going to be using and I'm going to start refining the assembly process. Well, that's it for now. Have a good one.